Hello, and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and uh, with me is no one because it's the morning and it's too early, and I don't even know why I said that. It's because I thought it was a full episode. I don't know. Forgive me. All right, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is animation events, and why is Unity not open? I totally had this open earlier. I must have done something. Um, so, uh, first of all, um, in the project file, I've already added a sound effect that we're going to be using today. It's a single footstep on carpet. Um, evidently, it's tennis shoes. Um, and if we hit play right now, we can just hear that. Just a very simple sound. And um, I have the uh, license information for it here. So if you want to use it, um, this the licensing is here. It can be used for purposes for this show, certainly. Um, double check the license if you're going to be using your own projects. Um, and check this uh, site out. It looks like it has a bunch of good uh, sound effects and they're all under the same license, so that's nice. So um, if we go to Footsteps Animation Events, which is a new folder I just created, we're going to just create a, we're just going to save our scene. We're just going to call this um, Simple Example. And we're going to put this into our Footsteps Animation Events. So first of all, I'm going to just show you a simple example of an animation event. So we're going to do all this from scratch. We're just going to create a sphere. We're going to create a directional light so that we, so it looks better in the game. Um, so if we hit play, we just have a sphere and a directional light. That's all we got. So I'm just going to quickly make an animation for the sphere. It's going to be really dumb. We're just going to, hit, I'm just going to hit record on it. We're going to call the animation. Uh, I'm going to put it in footsteps. We're going to call this uh, sphere bounce. And uh, we're just going to make it so at one second in, we move up to. 10 in the Y, and at 2 seconds in, we move back down to 0. So if we hit play on this, we should see it move up and then down. So if we go into the game view, we can see that it goes in and then it bounces. So um, so here we are. I probably should have done this in the opposite direction, but let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add an animation event to this. So, for the, so on the last episode, we did buttons. I had mentioned that buttons you needed. Uh, I, I'd mentioned erroneously that uh, buttons would only support um, non-static uh, functions, and that was not true. The buttons actually can do uh, normal, uh, uh, can do static functions or non-static functions as long as they're only one variable. Um, the rules that I was quoting were actually for animation events. So if you uh, go to your, if we go to our sphere here, um, we can. Add an animation again using this bar up here. We can just do add animation event when you right click it up there. And you spec specify a function. And this has to be an object that is, this has to be a function from something that's attached to the object itself. So for right now, for just the moment, I'm going to put in our um, music manager on the sphere. This is not going to stay here. I just want to show you that when we use the music manager here, it one one function comes up, and that's button crossfade audio clip. This is a non-static function that takes one one parameter, and we can actually specify a parameter if we if we do something with it. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to remove this animation event by clicking it and choosing delete, and uh, we're going to create our own script for what we're going to do here. So I'm going to create a C sharp script. We're going to call this um, uh, play sound. Event is what I'm going to call it. And uh, we could do this one of two ways. We could set it up so that we just have a void play um, and then have a audio source specified, audio clip specified. Or we could set it up where um, we set up the uh, sound in the... Uh, function in the, in this class itself and then play it there. I'm actually going to do the latter. You can do the former. It's not a big, not a big deal, but, um, I'm doing the latter just so that we can, um, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter for this example. Um, what I'm going to transition to, we're going to do another episode that's like this. Um, it'll make more sense to actually have it on here because we're going to have more than one, one thing that we're going to have to change for the event. So, uh, what we're going to do real quick is, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just create a public, actually I'm not even going to specify a clip, we're just going to have a, uh, I am going to require a component though, we'll do a re require component type of, and we're going to use a, um, we need an audio source, because otherwise this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And all we're going to do is just, we're going to create a function called uh, void play sound 
and all it's going to do is uh, um, audio dot play one shot. I guess we have to specify the clip on that. Let's just do audio dot play dot play. So really, really uber simple. And uh, we're going to put this on our sphere. And when we do that, it'll automatically add a, um, well, it didn't actually. Oh, um, I'm going to remove music manager. Why did play sound event not record? It has require component type of audio source. So it should have added an audio source when I added it here. There it goes. Okay, maybe it hadn't compiled yet. So um, it automatically adds it out of the source and adds itself here. So I'm just going to put our footstep sound for now, even though it doesn't really make sense in this case, but I just need a sound. So we're gonna go into uh, third party license, single footstep on carpet. We're gonna put that in the audio clip here, and we're not gonna play on awake. And so if we hit play right now, we shouldn't hear any sound. We'll just see the ball going up and down. Cool. And if I did play on awake, we should hear one sound, right? Okay, you could barely hear it, but it's there. Um, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer. We're just going to move it to five so that we can hear the audio better. So if we hit play, we'll hit hear that. Okay, cool. And, um, and so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to actually add this animation event. So I'm going to remove this play on awake, and we're going to add an animation event at the point where the ball hits the ground, which is right at the end here. We're just going to put it right at the end. And we're going to give it play sound. And so if we hit play now, we get a nice little sound every time that the ball hits the ground. Sweet, that works. So the next example I'm going to show you is, warning, there's going to be some complex stuff in here. Don't Just bear with it for right now. Um, at, I'm going to first show you how the sphere works. We have an animator on the sphere. It automatically worked there. There's only one state, and it says sphere bounce. That's, that's all we've got here. Um, both the, the animation state machine, which is the sphere here, and sphere bounce are, are in our folder here. And this is as simple as it gets. This is just a looping. We just stay in the state and it just does it continuously for the rest of our lives. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save this scene, save the project, uh, save all, save the project. And we're going to now create a new scene. And we're going to make the complex uh, example. So I'm going to actually just save this scene as footsteps. And we're going to put this in here. Save. And we're going to create a, um, a plane. And we're going to grab something from our, um, from our little library here. We're going to create a, uh, what is it called? Directional light. And we're going to go into the sample assets. Sample as assets is from the sample assets beta. I think it's still in beta. I haven't double checked. Um, these files are already available in the project if you download them. Um, but if you want to get them directly from Unity, they're in the asset store to uh, use in your own projects. And they have a cool little example character in here, uh, a third person character. So um, I already kind of started perusing this stuff earlier. So we're going to just grab his prefab. We're going to grab the third person character prefab. And um, I'm just going to drive them around real quick just so that you can see what happens. Um, so here's our character. If I press left and right and stuff, he, he moves around. Let's actually put a little behind the camera for him. This is going to be a really ghetto camera. So uh, we're just going to take our camera. Where's our first third person character? Where's our main camera? Let's bring the camera closer to him. Actually, let's just put the camera underneath him for right now. And then uh, bring the camera in a lot closer, like 5N, 2N higher and a little bit further back there we go this isn't perfect for like a video game but this will work for our purposes so if we hit play we should have a character that we can run around and you can see that he does cool stuff and pivots and makes walking and running um, so so let me make the area that we can walk around a little bit bigger we're just gonna make the plane like 10 by 10 which actually is 100 by 100 because planes are 10 units uh, by default. So um, so we got this walking, we got running. Um, so here's his walk animation, here's his run animation. And we're going to tag both of those real quick. So the key here is if we go to the, our third person controller, you'll see this is his animation controller. It's uh, considerably more advanced than what we were doing with our ball. But it's the same concept. These are all just keyframes and they control different components on, on his body. Um, now, you'll notice that it says read-only here, and this is true. We can't actually make any modifications to these animations. 
but it's easy to fix that with one caveat. Um, when you start doing things like adding sound tagging and stuff to characters, you're going to want to make sure that your animations are done, that your animator isn't touching them anymore. And the reason for that is when we create a copy of this that is not read-only, it will just be a copy of whatever time that we did it. So if the animator does continue continues to make changes to the animation, you will not see them immediately show up in Unity. You will have to recopy them again. So just keeping that in mind, we're going to show how to do this. So our character has a bunch of animations, and these animations are from animation files. If we reveal these in Finder, we'll find that these are FBX files. These are like standard from, from export from uh, uh, 3ds Max or Blender or whatever. And... Um, and so these contain the animation data. And so I'm gonna grab walk. So here's walk. And we're going to command D or control D if you're on Windows to duplicate it, and then we can drag that somewhere else. So we're gonna put this walk in our um, in our footsteps and animation events thing. And uh, what else are we gonna do? We're going to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a duplication of the third person character so that we don't mess anything up for them. Um, just going to duplicate it and put it into our project thing here. And additionally, we're going to be making changes to the animator. So I'm going to grab the third person animator controller and duplicate that as well. Oops. So duplicate, command D or control D if you're on Windows, and put this into here. So Let's uh, switch out this third person character real quick. I'm just gonna move the camera. Where is he at? Oh, he's in a special position, kind of. I'm just gonna copy his component here, delete this guy, and make sure that we drag in our new third person controller. Looks like he might've already did the same settings, but I'm gonna paste component values. He didn't. And we're gonna put our camera back in him. So it should be just like we did before. So, except for now we're using our own instance so we don't mess up the one that's in the uh, examples here. So um, the other thing we need to make sure is this guy is probably still using the old um, controller. He is. So we want to change that to the new one that we just copied in. So we're going to copy this here. So now we're using his own controller. I'm going to hit apply. And we're set up. So let's look at his uh, animation controller. So if we go in here, you'll see that uh, it looks very simple. It's just airborne, grounded, and crouching. This actually looks simpler than some of the state machines that we've made ourselves. Um, the key here is uh, what each of these is is actually a blend tree. So if we go into the blend tree, this is where all the magic happens. And uh, admittedly, this is a lot to take in right now, so don't worry too much about it. But basically, this shows all of the states that the character can be in during on the ground. And they're all based on how much you are pressing forward or left and a combination of that. And so if we actually look at his little preview here, I'm going to make this as big as I can here, um, we can hit play, and it'll show him doing his idle animation. And we can drag this, this dot here to show how he will react in different scenarios. So here, here's his turning animations. If you go forward and turn, he kind of walks forward and turns. If you go all the way forward, he runs and turns. And uh, same thing here. So, so he's got a forward run. He's got a leftward leaning run. And this is all driven by this. And this is how you get these really smooth, cool transitions when you're moving the character around using an analog stick. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to ch be changing this one, which um, which is our walk. And we're going to be changing our run. We're not going to worry about the, the sub ones here, um, though you would have to do these additionally as well. Um, so we're going to just... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we already grabbed walk out of here. So I'm going to put walk in here. And we're going to do the same thing with his run animation. We're going to go to run. We're going to command D to duplicate it. And then we're going to throw it into our folder here. And we're going to go into the grounded blend tree and choose run. Where's run? There's run. We're going to replace this run with our copy of it. So there we go. So now if we look here, you'll see that walk and run are both no longer read-only. So we can actually add animation events and stuff to this. So let's go ahead and do the walk first. So we're going to just preview him walking by moving this up here and hitting play. And we're going to see that at, um, at about 30 seconds in, about here, about 25 seconds in, he steps. And then about one second in he steps again. So we're gonna do it at 25 and one. So let's go ahead and add play sound effect to our third person character. 
And let's give him the footstep effect for right now. Single footstep on carpet. Boop. And let's apply this to our prefab. Uh, or I guess we can't. Oh, because we're recording. Let's apply this to our prefab. So now we're going to go to our walk animation. And we're going to right click. And we were at like how many seconds in? Oh, wait. So this is, this claims to be one second. That doesn't seem right. 25 and one, why did it become one? Oh, okay, those aren't seconds, those are, those are, okay, I see. So uh, we're gonna have to tr turn this into uh, more useful value real quick. So let's look at these again real quick. We'll just use the percentages and kind of figure it out. So this is uh, set at sampling at 30. So 30 steps is one second. And so um, so halfway is uh, is 15, well, 15 steps should be halfway, but it doesn't look like it's halfway. 15, 20, 25, 30. That's weird. That looks off to me. Because that looks way halfway. Oh, it's because I'm not looking at the whole animation. There we go. So yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, 15 is definitely halfway. So um, so anyway, uh, we were looking at where the animation hits. It's about 25 seconds in. So that's, I'm going to say that's about here. And we're going to right click and choose add animation event. And we're going to do um, play sound. And then if we go to one second in, we're going to add another animation event where he... I'm going to leave it one step before the one second just because you don't want it right at the end in case uh, it's actually past the last key. Oh, it's not going to be past the last key. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's put it right at the end. We'll see what happens. And um, and this is for our walk, right? Yeah. So we're going to do play sound. And now if we go into their game and hit play, we should, if we hold... Uh, okay, so we got a sound right at the start. That was because we forgot to turn off... Um, the play on awake here so let's get rid of that and hit play and so now if I hold shift and walk forward see it's working so we've got sounds when we do that now we're not getting sounds when we do the turning because we're not handling that yet and we don't get sounds when we run yet oh wait we do get sounds when we run interesting I guess that's because of how the blending is happening we're still getting the walk animation Oh, there we go. So, no. Okay, well, maybe we don't have to do it on both. So, probably pick one. That's interesting that that just worked for both, just like that. That's cool. Um, so, I, I kind of don't like the timing on some of them. So, one, one, two. I'm going to go ahead and just put this closer to the even here, just so that we have an even footstep sound, even if it's not quite as accurate. And so now we've got that, and then when we run, we got that. So that's cool. Evidently, because of the way the blend tree works in this case, we didn't have to mark both of them. In the future, you might have to mark both of them, and obviously we have to change them for some of the blends to the left and right and stuff, but we're not going to go over that on this show. Um, you may ask, you, Max, this is a lot of work to do. Is this, is this something that you would actually do like this? And the answer is actually yes. Um, uh, I can confirm that, uh, I can confirm this because uh, it was my job for a month to do this for a character, um, specifically for Nathan Drake. And he has, we were a lot more granular about it, and we, we had a function for left foot, a function for right foot, a function for left hand, and a function for right hand. And the reason we had this is because he can um, he makes sounds when he hits surfaces, and also he can make footprints or handprints um, depending on what he's touching and stuff. If there's like snow or something, and so the every single animation where his hand touched an object or where his foot would touch the ground uh, or an object, uh, I had to tag for animation events. And so yes, this is this is a real thing that people do. Um, you could build your own system that uses colliders or something, that's fine. If you, if you don't have too much, um, stuff that you're doing in the game otherwise, you can do it, run it programmatically like that. There's not a big deal with that. But, um, uh, for efficiency, you might need to do a system like this. If you have a lot of complex characters moving through the scene, you don't want to have, like, 15 colliders all over them just touching things and trying to get sounds to go. So, um, anyway, thank you for watching. Um, we're just going to save this, save the project.
And um, and yeah, so so we learned a lot of things today. We learned uh, we learned how to uh, split out animations from an existing animation to edit them and add events. We learned about animation events, and um, and we learned uh, a little bit about blend trees. We just at least got to see a blend tree. So um, so. Uh, try to absorb all that, and I will catch you tonight with another episode of Cooking with Unity. I'm not sure what we're doing tonight. We may be continuing um, the light gun game, or we might be trying something else. So um, catch us tonight, seven. Sorry, um, eight thirty p.m. Uh, PDT. Um, actually, I guess it's PST now that we're we're in winter. But um, I think that either one, we'll get there at the right time. I think that no matter what what time service you check, you'll get that. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. Really appreciate it. If anyone here is in, in, in here from Orange Lounge Radio, welcome. Glad to have you here. We had an interview with Orange Lounge Radio yesterday, and um, I uh, will be putting, tweeting a link to that uh, today. So check at, at Drakfire for the link to the interview with, uh, with us on Orange Lounge Radio. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tonight.